All right, we're back for more. <laughs> My two guests have just started eating donuts that uh, looked like uh, Jeff Stryker came on all three of them. Stryker's Island. There used to be like a huge billboard on Santa Monica and La Cienega. And I, I actually tried to rent it because I thought it was like a, a, like a parody of uh, Escape from Alcatraz. And uh, there was no escaping from Stryker's Island. Talking to the mic, man. Oh, I didn't know we were live. Dude. Yeah, we're live. I'm just introing the show. What do you think we're doing? This is radio, not TV. That's <laughs> you uh. Been introduced yet? Let him intro the show. That's the great uh, Hart Bachner telling that to Hans von Gruber and Die Hard. <laughs> Hans, what's with the gun? This is radio, not TV. Put away the gun. All right, uh, we, we, you know, as many of you know, there was a mishap uh, when I. When uh, my H4N recorder asked me a question saying uh, fragment disc, I said yes. I erased uh, two two-hour episodes of Inappropriate Earl. But we're back. These guys are back for more, like Rat would say. Uh, to my left is the great uh, one and only Sandy Danto eating uh, his jelly donut. And it's actually a bacon donut. Bacon torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> And Carlos Herrera, he's a man of mystery in the comedy world. I mean, uh, he's the only man who's been engaged for six years after meeting the girl for six days. <laughs> Guys, thank you for coming back. I know that, uh, you know, just get a nap. the mystery guest? The mystery guest uh, will be coming here in about an hour. Oh, Jesus, dude. I'd I like thought we'd be done by then. You might be. I mean, this might be done in 10 minutes, and then I could, uh, you know, she's also a controversial. Ah! <laughs> she's a controversial figure in the world of stand-up. Got a lot of heavy hitters chasing her. <laughs> and uh, you know she's moving and grooving through the the, the cesspool of LA comedy. She's moving and grooving. <laughs> Back in the New York Gruber, Eric Gruber was due to be here, but uh, what happened? You know, I only got three mics, man. And you know this is two been, Garys. Mm, I I did an open mic the other night, and then last week I did an open Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Gary, Glenn Loss. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Mule there, <laughs> old school comic. Do you guys need some napkins or uh, no, you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're touching the mic that David Arquette, Tony Katane, and Josh Meyerowitz touch. <laughs> Autistic thunder. <laughs> it's really good to have. I a got a good parking spot. Where'd you park? Right outside Fiesta Cantina. Oh yeah, you're on the meter program. <laughs> so you, got you a know, real good parking spot. Some. <laughs> Inside Fiesta Cantina, the You're bathroom. Gonna, you were, you were out of too. <laughs> you were out of control uh, yesterday on my Facebook page. I, I posted I was at Equinox, and like my phone kept buzzing, and I got literally like twelve replies. Eleven of them were Carlos with these inside jokes. Even I don't get. <laughs> Dude, I'm parked on P1. Next one, dude, I'll see you at the steam room. Next one, say hello to Fabio. The next one, say hello to the two guys from Dallas. <laughs> Josh Henderson and Jesse Metcalf. Dallas, Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> so now, Sandy, uh, let, you, you know, we like to talk about the roast battle. Uh, you were a major part of it last night. Yeah, I was the undercard. And you uh, you did a first for the roast battle. You were three different characters. No, I was two. They they cut it off. But but mainly I, I was Polly. And and Jason Tebow, the great Teebs, Teebies, uh, TBS. Uh, he was uh, various characters, and uh, I thought that was a nice uh, swerve to the roast battle. Yeah, we want to do it again. We didn't write any jokes beforehand. We just kind of. It's, it must was be it hard, fun, though. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I've never been. Well, you know, you'll make your return to the store one of these days. You'll be back for more, like Rat would say. <laughs> and uh, how are the donuts, guys? Who's going to eat the third one? Well, I bought the that one for Sandy with the strawberry on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you love those berries. <laughs> Uh, I like Barry. I like Jonathan's. Barry, Barry Sobel, Barry Katz, <laughs> Barry Larkin, Barry Bonds, Barry Barry, Fred Barry from Rerun, from What's Happening. <laughs> He's my favorite Barry. Pink Barry. <laughs> uh, I might have to go easy just for a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah, just be cool, you know, and let's just uh, try and recapture the magic of... Uh, the, the first one was so good, the one that Yeah, I know. Well, well, what was good about it is we got some really good stories out of you. Yeah. Yeah, but this podcast is going to no, be more no. about you guys. No, we want to talk about you, though, because there's like, you know, there's the you that the internet knows. You know, you talk about Backpage and stuff on Twitter and, you know, our Attention Pine. LA comments. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, you know, I try to keep it like real. Jamar and stuff. Let's talk more about like the gangbangs, dude, on Tohini. Attention LA Comics. Us- <laughs> using Gerard Carmichael's HBO special as your credit because you're in the audience doesn't count on IMDb. Dude, can I write that? I might have to live yeah. tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. That's I'm, a good one. I'm sure Carmichael has a lot of Palmers coming after him now. Oh, for sure. Were you there at the HBO taping? No, I was headlining an open mic in the Century City. So, <laughs> And I think I started like Avenue six of the Sars? Avenue of the Bars. <laughs> <laughs> It used to be a, a hot strip club uh, on the Avenue that starts 2020. I'd always go Where? there. Uh, just in the mall. You know, I'd go there with uh, Stephen Adler. In the mall? Yeah, it was 2020. I mean, it used to be the Playboy Club. Jesus, dude. That, <laughs> that donut's a fucking... That's no joke, that donut. Mm-hmm. Donut? How is it? I need a bath after that. <laughs> how, how is it? It's really good. You're going to need some toilet paper after that. I mean... <laughs> Baby wipes. Baby oil. Baby wipes. Baby doll from WCW. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, that was the good part about the first one we recorded. Wait, I want to know why you bumped us so many times. Well, here's, uh, you know, when I first started this podcast, I thought, oh, I'll just tape like 20 of them. And then if someone can't do it one week, I'll just release one. And yeah. uh, in hindsight, looking back, it was probably a big mistake. You know, I should. Ne- this one will air tonight. Uh, oh really? I'm just gonna release it, uh, or to, you know, when I get home. Dude, from just my, do it tonight. I'll be at the ice house in an hour. This will air six hours after that. So, uh, you know, just you know, trying to be more proactive. And uh, even uh, the last episode of Inappropriate Earl was a uh, with hot n- with nose. A hot dose of me at the Camarillo Moose Lodge in two thousand nine. I I listened to the nose one. Yeah, it was, it was all right, you know. I mean, I liked it. I listened to it. Uh, I was on the treadmill. I mean, the uh, on the wh- second floor. Equinox. You know, I'm trying to get it going. You know, I need some more celebrities on what the show. What percent of your listenership belongs to Equinox? Just me. Zero. <laughs> I li- I listen. I mean, I don't think uh, Russell Peters listens to this, so uh, I'm trying to get him in on the mix. Where does he go to the gym? He probably has his own individual equipment. Oh, I bet he has right. his one at private yeah, one yeah. in his house. Probably hire some big black guy to you know run him around the treadmill in his FUBU gear. And, <laughs> you know, Jesus. I see Paulie at Equinox. He's always yeah, he's there a lot working it. Paulie, yeah, dude. You gotta do. You gotta. You know what you got. The move is to to be on your phone and like looking. Like you're busy while you're on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, he's the master doing that. The hot girl will walk in, from, you know, 800 yards away from him. He looks up instantly, like one of those Battlestar Galactica droids. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's what happens when I work out with you. Yeah, Except it's not a girl; it's some guy from an '80s movie. <laughs> yeah, but you. Uh, well, I saw Peter Weller there the other day at uh, Beverly Hills uh, Equinox. Nine, I, oh, uh, on Wilshire. Yeah, in the Willie How Morris. is that one? That's all right. It's like Beverly Hills High. A lot of Persians and, uh, you know, middle class jabronis. Have you ever worked out at the Beverly Hills Sports Club? Uh, The one on Uh, Motor? uh, It's on like Wilshire and and it's right next to WME. You know what I'm talking about? That's the old Valley Fitness. That's the new Equinox. It used to be Sports Club LA. Yeah, Yeah, uh, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equinox bought Sports Club LA. Yeah, from Mike Talla, who used to own the Sports Connection gym chain, which I worked at. If you're familiar <laughs> with sports, a towel Con- boy. I, I couldn't Dude, get give hired. Me a towel, just give it to me. I couldn't get hired at Equinox on Sepulveda. Now I'm a fucking member. So uh, Janelle, who wouldn't hire me, sucks salt. <laughs> you, you twat. And you know, so but I don't hold grudges. So you should have been in the my movie pain and game my stomach hurts uh, boy you just donuts. ate a donut that probably has more sugar on it than uh you know most people eat in a year <laughs> and you're about to eat a second one yeah i'll probably get into the other one Fla- i bet i, I just i want to know one who the mystery guest is you'll see when that you- it makes it not a mystery if he tells you miss mystery that was a good song by black and blue <laughs> 
back in the day. I, I want to. Okay, well then I I want to. I want some. We don't have to go over the same gangbang stories that you deleted. Control conveniently delete. deleted. Yeah, I deleted them. <laughs> Wait, did you delete them on purpose? No. Wait, ha- didn't you say some of it was recovered? What happened was uh, I put the uh, the se- not the sound card, but the memory card in the Zoom recorder. And it said fragment disk. I didn't know what that meant. I actually hit no, and it didn't register. So I said, oh, maybe I just should hit yes. And it, I guess when you fragment a disk, it deletes everything. So one of Don Barris's Ding Dong Show fans said, I can find it. I have a program. So he, okay. he uh, did whatever he did, and there was like 30 minutes of the other podcast. Can you tack it onto this one? But it's not of your guys. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, more than one. Who... Okay, this is my see. buddies Chris and Cole, and I, I put it up on. It's, you know, it sounds good. It's Colon, Cole Young, <laughs> forever young. <laughs> well, I want to know Steve how young. you met Miami Steve, uh, Miami Eric. Yeah, how many friends with the nickname Miami do you have? Um, you know, uh, just Miami Eric, and then there's uh, Monty the Jew, uh, Slick Rick, Sport. Uh, sport is one his real name ever used on these podcasts. Who are you? Um, I'm uh, Slim. Everyone calls me Slim. All right. Can you? I want to know about the dynamic of you and the group. I want to know about Miami, Eric, where you guys used to go. I know you guys used to go to Beverly and Doheny. These are all your your pre comedy friends that were in that were agents and producers. That as soon as they convinced you to become a comic. Got out of the business. Yeah, my one friend who's a huge manager still to this day is like the only one who uh, stayed in the business. Uh, he's the one I remember. We were driving outside uh, the Beverly Center on 3rd and La Cienega. He's like, dude, you should take some acting classes or whatever. You're funnier than any of our clients. And they had, he was at, uh, I think, William Morris at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, So like, yeah, so I started, and then they all left to get into real estate. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we used to go to these high-end pussy parties. Where? They were they were at a different place each week because the heat was on, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying. And and this guy, Anderson Chang, he was like, he would call us some and go, guys, we're having a party tonight. Come on the list. It was $100 to get in, but we'd get in for free because he liked us, and he, I think he was a bone smoker. <laughs> so he, and he wanted to fuck Eric, who was like a really good-looking dude. So we'd go to these pussy parties at high-end five-star restaurants. One was on Beverly uh, Glen in Santa Monica. One was at Russian Roulette in Century City. And there'd, there'd be these sex parties. I want to know about that right now. It was crazy. You'd walk in and you imagine going into the Palm and it, having it be dark. Dude, I'm imagining it right now. And guys, <laughs> famous athletes, actors, comics, uh, you know, are blowing their baby batter <laughs> where some guy's going to be paying for a $100 meal tomorrow. <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. And how often would these take place? Once a week, and then Anderson, <laughs> Anderson kind of fell off the face of the earth. Or Orsini's on Pico. That was a great one because the rub-out room was on the second floor right above the dance floor. So, like, all my friends would be blowing loads onto the dance floor. <laughs> well, it's, it's raining men. Hallelujah. <laughs> while people are dancing, my buddy Dirty Warren... <laughs> Dirty Warren. Who had like eight VIP cards to Fantasy <laughs> Island with eight different names. <laughs> he was an animal. I mean, we had some gang bangs at his house, too. He was great. Though. Where do he live? Um, he lived in Westwood, you know, like on Malcolm and, and Olympic. And he, we had a few scenes at his place. <laughs> the best was one time this girl, had, I don't know, she'd fuck like seven or eight of us. And I was the last man standing. And uh, I remember I walk into his place. She's like, who the hell are you? And my buddy's like, he's got more money than all of us. And he's like, oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> so she'd taken loads for like four hours. I mean, she looked like Alice Cooper at the Encore of one of his concerts. <laughs> <laughs> and my buddy says, honey, you're the type of girl I'd like to bring home to my mom. And, uh, you know, she got pissed off and said, you know, fuck off, pay me. <laughs> oh, my these favorite were, es- were these escorts? Uh, they, my buddies had used escorts at the time, you know. My yeah. favorite story is the one where you're with a, uh, not a famous person, but a a notable name. Well, the wife of a notable name, which is very topical because where I dropped her off was <laughs> Donald Sterling's hotel 
on uh, Wilshire and uh, Comstock. Right, the story where. Oh yeah, you dude, left uh, your old girlfriend to dude. To, to my, Miami my, Air. my friends called me. This is before texting. My <laughs> friends called me. They're like, "Dude, come, come to the Four Seasons. I got a live one." Well, so I'm in bed with so my I'm girlfriend. So I'm in bed with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I Miami get up. Eric has to go to the airport. <laughs> There's no more taxis in the whole country. I gotta take him. <laughs> the buses are down, and he can't run. So I gotta take him to this flight that leaves in 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 so I show up. I just leave. Uh, no, it was what the the Wilshire. Grant. No, was it the no, four no, it was at my, uh, no, it was my buddy uh, who since I just learned committed suicide. Uh, <laughs> let me let me see what uh, he didn't really have a nickname. I'll, I'll just call him uh, Hot Tub Johnny too. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was great. I look- would have said that too. Great looking guy. Worked at a big agency. Uh, I get the call. Go over to uh, JG's house. And, uh, you know, you never seen a car drive so fast at three in the morning to get somewhere. And you left it running on your I'm red driving beamer. through red lights. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, Adrian Barbeau and, uh, Ernest Borgnine at the end of escape from New York <laughs> when they're Great uh, movie. trying yeah. to, uh, Great navigate, soundtrack. navigate the, uh, 34th street bridge that's mined. <laughs> and, uh, so I get get there. I couldn't find parking. I just left my car in the middle of Doheny. <laughs> lights running, car on. I get I, I open the door and I'll never forget the visual. It was like that opening scene in Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> just bodies everywhere. I mean, used rubbers that look like rice patties. I mean, <laughs> just everyone. My one buddy. Uh, Miami Dan looked up at me and goes, are you a girl or a guy? <laughs> um, so they said the girl's back there, but we're out of condoms. And then I'm like, well, what do you have? He's like, well, go in the kitchen, get whatever. And so the first thing I saw was a Pringles can. <laughs> uh, that's not going to work. Dude, I'm not Mandingo. And then, I, who is? And then I saw... <laughs> Mandingo. Mandingo is Mandingo. <laughs> Mandingo, meet Mandingo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I saw an un- unopened uh, container of Ritz crackers. I opened up the uh, the cardboard box. I got the plastic wrapper off, and I dumped all the crackers out. And then I, if I, that were me, I would have got distracted and eaten all the crackers. Well, I had a cracker or two to give me some off. carbohydrates. And then, uh, <laughs> I took her into uh, Hot Tub Johnny's, uh, I guess his business office, and where, where there's scripts everywhere. I mean, you know, and these were to big movies. Any good ones? Though? Um, um, I think there was, uh, you know, Indiana Bones in the Temple of Poon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. So, I, you know, I looked down. I'll never forget it. The light was on. And I looked down at her uh, this private area, and uh, oh, my God, it, it uh, looked like the thing Boba Fett fell into, <laughs> uh, Return of the Jedi. Did you go in? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, so I did my thing, and... You know, were there uh, people around you? No, no, they were all passed out, and and just you know, some guy had a banana stuck up his ass. I mean, <laughs> it was just you, you know craziness, and <laughs> so she started looking a little roughed up, and she had bruises all over her, oh and, and just makeup running, and and just this girl had taken you know just bit been major punishment yeah she looked like tex cobb after his fight with larry holmes i mean just, oh my god <laughs> so i said listen i'll give you a ride home Dude, my car's already running my, just my, we'll go in. <laughs> she didn't even remember where her pants were so she puts on a jacket underwear that looked like it had been through an oil pit <laughs> <laughs> and we get in the car and i hadn't really noticed when she put it on but i'm like oh you have a she had Shelby Motors on her jacket. I'm like, oh my god, Shelby Motors, Carol Shelby, the the creator of maybe the greatest car ever, the the Cobra Mustang. You know Carol Shelby? And she looks at me, and goes, "No, him. That's my husband." <laughs> That's so crazy. So I dropped her off at Donald Sterling's hotel, and uh, she asked me to come upstairs. I mean, that shows you her sexual appetite. Did you go upstairs? No, I was I was tapped out. Man. Didn't you call your friends and tell them you knew of a live one? I called, yeah, and then they tried to take her out on a date. No, no. That's, well, I mean, this that's is my the favorite next, part. I yeah. called my friends Steroid Rob and Little <laughs> Albert, <laughs> and uh, they were like gym rats at, at the gym I worked at, Sports Pain Connection. And game. And Albert meet Rob. Rob meet Albert. And uh, <laughs> Fat Albert. <laughs> 
Rob Roy. <laughs> Rob Ray from the Buffalo Sabres. Um, so I said, listen, Rob's like, I'll tell her I'm a famous bodybuilder. I'm like, you don't have to. Albert's like, I'll tell her I play for the Raiders. I'm like, first of all, you look like Gary Coleman. She's not going to believe you play for the fucking Raiders. Um, just go over there. So I drop him off. Three days later, they call me. I'm like, hey, man, how was it? They're like, how was it? We're still here. <laughs> I mean, this girl had a sexual appetite, unlike any woman I've ever met. So then word started getting around about this girl. She, she'll, you know, she'll bone you all night, all day. I mean, it's free. I mean, she, you didn't even have to take her out. I mean, she just, just either was trying to get back at her husband or something. Didn't even have to take her to Dantana's, dude. Dantana, Vegas, Robert Urich, Bart Braverman is Benzer. <laughs> Judy Landers is the secretary. Audrey Landers on Dallas. <laughs> So my buddy uh, Jumpin' Jay, he's like, well, I'm going to take her to dinner. I'm like, you, dude, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and, uh, so he takes her to dinner <laughs> and uh, goes to take her to play pool. She calls me the next day. I'm like, hey, how was Jay? He's got a big dick, right? He's like, I never saw it. I'm like, what? You never saw it? You've had sex with half of California and you didn't fuck my friend Jason? What was wrong with him? He's like, he took me to pool. I'm like, well, what's wrong with that? He's like, I'm not fucking any guy that can't beat me in pool. <laughs> it's amazing. What if she's the mystery guest tonight? <laughs> I would love it, man. I mean, you know, I'm I'm out of that game. You know, I'm I'm I'm, you know, uh, I've had some uh, unpleasant experiences in the last couple of years. So I'm. What happened? I'm Frank and Ernest with my women. Frank in Chicago, Ernest in Miami. <laughs> 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 Wait, what Ernest? happened in the last couple of years? Uh, you know, just uh, unpleasantries, and uh, you know, just trying to get back in the game. And uh, but what game are you trying to get back into? The game of love, but chocolate like, love, <laughs> monogamous love, yeah, or yeah. like gang bangs on no, Doheny. My, my gang bang days are over. You know, I think uh, maybe I'm being be naive, over. but it sounds like the days of those kind of things going on are, is over now. Unless you're a twink. Yeah. Well, unless you're at Brian Singer's house uh, delivering a script for Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you transform your dick into my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think what Brian Singer was doing, if I had his money and I was that famous, I'd be having big titted parties. Yeah, yeah totally. So, but so you probably wouldn't be doing it with 14-year-old girls like this guy. And the doing. scandal would be you'd get in trouble for turning girls away that don't have big enough tits yeah. and they're like 34 <laughs> Cs. He uh, should be paying these kids, though, a lot of money just to be quiet. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know why he didn't do that. It's like Sterling should have paid off that gorilla. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, who does her skincare? Seal? Well, I, oh, God, it, her skin is terrible. Oh, I mean, it's got like, I thought it was Lieutenant Castillo from Miami Vice. <laughs> <laughs> He should have paid her off. Now he's, you know. Yeah, but then once once somebody takes you for a ride like that, yeah, they're gonna tell other people, and then they're gonna be pe all kinds of people coming out of the woodwork trying to blackmail you. I mean, I'm sure she's not the only, uh, you know, fishy gash in Sterling's life. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but she's the first one to to take him for a ride like that. Well, I bet you know two weeks before that he called her a cunt, or he was out with some new younger twat, and he's like, "I'll show you a cunt," and then ratted him out. Rat patrol. What's your plan now to get like back in the game of love? Just uh, you know, be uh, the ultimate male. Be the ultimate male. Be a three percent man. And, yeah, uh, you is know. that just like a lot of reading, working out twice a day, mm -hmm. not like calling girls, like letting them? What is that? Let them come to you. Read a lot of Tony Robbins and Jack Canfield and uh, Marshall Silver. Power of the mind. Yeah, I'm also starting a tribute band to uh, Morrissey called the uh, Tommy Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So you know, just uh, you know, trying to uh, come on. Well, so but I think Polly liked my racist character, though. Dude, yeah, it was good. Cause what? <laughs> Dean. Cause Dean. That was Dean's a, not a racist. Dean. That was my first time performing in front of Polly. I'm mean, not that I was doing stand up, but last night you did that at the roast. I did me and Whitney uh, Rice, who's yeah. my cohort. In the uh, roast battle, giggles, giggles and jiggles. <laughs> you know, everyone thinks we're boning, but we're not. So I mean, it's you know that's frustrating. Like two people can't create a sketch or characters together without Gosh. the world thinking we're boning. I know. Every I was 
I was out like a month or a couple, like six weeks ago, and someone mentioned it to me about you and Whitney. I, but that's the crazy thing. Is like, yeah, no, it's insane. It's just like people know we're friends, and they're like bringing up you and Whitney to me, and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, Eli Whitney, the cotton gin. <laughs> Everybody just wants some gossip to spread around. Oh yeah, have yeah. something to make themselves more interesting. You know, yeah, it's you know. You should just boner then. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm everyone just, already thinks you are. Well, you know, it's like. What are you, an improv troupe or something, dude? I mean, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I, I was running out of racist things to say. Yeah, no, I get that. Is she a good writer? Oh, she's great. All her lines are hers. You know, they're good. Oh yeah. I mean, it's tough to be, uh, at least appear to be racist and funny on this thing. Of course. I mean, I've been doing it for like seven months now, and <laughs> each week they go to me like three to four times. Yeah. So I, I'm just like, you know, I'm out. Yeah, that must be hard. And now the industry's looking at it. Well, I don't think the industry likes the racist character. Really? Why not? Do you look at I them could just after? Tell. I could tell. You know, I mean, it's crazy. It's the first thing that will get cut if roast battle. Of course. Uh, That's unless... lame, though. It's probably. It's probably amazing. It's well, I really, mean, really funny. You know, it, I don't but know. Every what, time the industry comes, everybody gets a little bit tighter. Are they palming? And so, like, people, like, when I was there for the last industry showcase that they did, anytime Earl would make a really funny joke or Whitney would make no a really would funny act joke, like, people were like, ooh, instead no, of laughing. And they which were is funny. what they would normally do. Yeah. And it, and made That's it uncomfortable. Were they going to throw Earl under the bus because some executive said that would never talk to them ever? That's well, lame. I mean, there was a big manager there last night and who walked right in front of me and Whitney and kind of blew us off. It's like, you know. I, well, fuck it. I mean, I, I asked the higher ups on the show, do you want me to tone yeah. it down? And they're like, don't tone it down until they start paying us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. That's great. That's really cool advice. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, Jeff Ross is the best, man. You know, he's yeah. super cool and, you know. Yeah, if they're not paying you, then. <laughs> Yeah, but still, I don't, you know, I, I could look over last night at the executive's faces. I had a couple home run lines that didn't really fall flat, but I mean, you know, yeah. they didn't do as That's well as everyone. And you know, it's not so that they, they just that, like, don't get it, man. Exactly, yeah. What I don't understand how, in the industry, th these are people that obviously are passionate about comedy Money. and about... Money. M well... Maybe getting these jobs is what changes them because they come to shows and they don't laugh. Like even comics who are the most jaded and see the most comedy are wow. laughing. Like what? Why is it that these people that at one time had a passion for all things that are funny are, are just funny. so joyless that they come to comedy shows and they don't laugh? Like what do they instead of laughing just hear dollar signs? In yeah, their head? entitlement and money for sure. That's all it is. Yeah, we're doing. We're making a good case for ourselves, from getting further in this. <laughs> but I mean, I think in the context of the roast battle, it's the, you know what it is. Exactly. I mean, you know, you've got the all black section, and then you've got the house racist, which is just you and Whitney. Me and Whitney it used to be. Where me. do you sit? Do you sit? Well, like... Yeah, it's satire, though. It's of not. Course. It's not meant to be taken. Like, oh, this guy's really a racist. You know. But some people I look in the crowd think I really am. Right. They don't get it then. You don't want them to think you're funny then. Whatever with them. Like we, they'll, if they get it, they'll think you're funny. But we started. Uh, we try and start so over the top. Exactly. That there's not one person on the planet who would think. And the black comics are the ones who laugh the most. Yeah. Which makes me feel good. Like you know, I think one of the lines last night was, uh, you know, me and Whitney are getting married. We're going to Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, got a decent laugh, but, I mean, it's like... Uh, you do you know. do Tommy from the back? No, no, it's really not. I don't... It's oh, not you really don't... You, it's just... It's just oh. kind of like this... Uh, a separate... Like a, like a mutant a, character a mutant, of that. You know, okay. Uh, and then I said, hey, uh, I interrupted the show. I held, held up my phone. Hey, guys, I just got a text. My script for the White Power Rangers just got, <laughs> you know, sold. <laughs> and I got it's not pay. even... It's not like he's saying racist things. They're just making funny yeah well like you know, play on word jokes old, yeah the first industry showcase which was when hinchcliffe and jesus yeah uh, what networks were there though or i what? think some networks like maybe nbc uh, or something i think some like regular networks okay so, uh, we probably went a little over the top with like <laughs> you know whitney had the best joke 
maybe one of the best jokes ever of it. Yeah. Roast. She's like, Moses, Brian Moses, the host. Mm -hmm. The last time you were touched by a white woman, Jane Goodall was in the room. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That is a almost. She a, wrote that. She's funny. As that's fuck a that. perfect <laughs> joke, man. Yeah. I mean, without saying the n word, it. I mean, that's like it's pretty cutting edge. Uh, yeah. Joke, and uh, I, I looked at the industry, and and they looked at us like, Whoa, what? That's so lame. Wait, are you? Do you have you ever been one of the roasters? I bro roasted Boone once in one of the <laughs> early early roast, and uh, Boone's a tough guy to roast. Yeah. Boone Shakalaka, for those of you who don't know who we're talking about, which I'm assuming is everybody, uh, he's like this homeless transvestite at the comedy store who steals merchandise and sells it to the comics for a dollar. And I'm talking some good merch. iPods, iPhones, iPads. Artwork. Yeah, maxi pads. That was the Matt Taylor roast. You got the... Uh, it oh, got ruined. Matt Why? Taylor and uh, Mike Cetera were uh, what happened? terrible. I want an outsider's perspective. You, I wasn't there. Okay. I just heard it was it was real bad. Well, the what first happened? round, uh, it was two bringer show promoters, which uh, bringer shows are awful. They're, they're uh, everything that's uh, bad about uh, stand up comedy because you're booked on not uh, if you're funny or not, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it just how many people you can bring. So yeah. the joke of the night was, let's have two bringer show promoters roast yeah, that's each a other. Good idea. Wait, Satara so does that at the store? Uh, he does it everywhere. Like the belly room, belly room, and other shitty comedy clubs. Sal's Comedy Hole, and and you know uh, the Ha Ha, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> so you know it was. Uh, I mean, Matt Taylor started out decent, but I think his brother David, the great David Taylor, wrote most of the funny jokes. Yeah, and then Mike Satara, he had some kind of I don't Matt know. Matthew had great jokes. I know that because I wrote them and, in uh, our projector room. And uh, then at the Off beginning of the 139th Street. At the and, beginning <laughs> of the second round, Matt Taylor just quit. What? Like he just took a knee. And Jeff Ross was pissed. Everyone was pissed. I mean, because it was like you just ruined the, the whole the night. night. You ruined the night. So then they brought up the People under look forward to that, right? And yeah. there was industry there for that, too. Ah. Uh, and so then That's they brought lame. up the undercard, the two black comics who were on the undercard, and they killed Ooh. Keith Soul and I forget the dude's name, but he's a super nice guy. Wait, so they have like Jack two, Knight? They have two no, backups? Someone like that. They have two backups? Well, no, they have an undercard usually of like beginning comics who you know may not be ready. Uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, I heard Jesus is like amazing. Oh, Jesus is yeah, a killer. He's great. You know. He's so funny. And he's so nice, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't How's think, Tony doing at it? You know, Tony well, Tony's, was, Tony's kind of, jokes were great. Yeah, he's like a really good joke writer. But yeah. I was wondering if he's good, like if he no, always, he was good. Does he always win because I'd imagine he, he only did it once. Oh, really? But uh, I think Tony's very lucky though because he has no clue of the jokes that Jesus didn't use. Oh, they're that really people good. gave him two people in particular. I don't know if they want to be known. So uh, mm -hmm. it, they were very mean spirited, but very funny. I mean, killer. I mean, Tony. Jesus. What were they? Um, I mean, I don't, I, this, don't these, tell, you don't tell us who I want to know. These the aren't jokes, my jokes, I but, um, I'll, I'll say one, but I wrote them. <laughs> no, no, I did not. I did not write these jokes. Sorry. So, uh, you know, I, I think they, you know, I'll leave it to them if they want to be uh, known on a future podcast. But one of their jokes was, uh, well, we all know that, uh, Tony and Esther, uh, live together until Esther kicked him out saying there was only room for one cunt. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah. Here's the best joke, and this is the only other one I'll say. Cause Fountain. This is the best joke. Now, for those of you who are local L.A. people, you'll get the joke. Uh, Mitzi actually went as Tony for Halloween. All she had to do was pull out three hairs and be unfunny. <laughs> Oh my god! And I don't That's think amazing. I don't think Tony would have had comebacks. How do you no. come back from that? I want to know what Brutus wrote that joke. Stabbed <laughs> him in the back with it. I want to know who did. Who it. wrote these jokes? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I would. I don't think these guys would care, but I mean, yeah. Just tell us after. I, they had um, fifteen of these, and they <laughs> all were. That's one, a good joke. They were brutal, and the gay. I think jokes I can were, guess. Yeah, I mean, listen, you guys are having donuts, but next time you might want to try a Danish. <laughs> if you're ever surfing, try O'Neill surfboards. 
Yeah, that. I, yeah, I I prefer those. <laughs> but he's very. I think Tony's very lucky that. Yeah, he he, didn't, he's just is too nice. Yeah, but Tony killed him in the first round. Tony uh, crushed him in the first round. What, and yeah. quite honestly, I thought Tony was going to win. Why did Jesus win? See, How do you th- decide who wins? Oh, the judges, obviously. See, I thought Jesus would win barely because I thought that Jesus was going to be better at the rebuttals. Was he? Um, you know, you could uh, people could argue. I mean, I scored it two rounds to one, and one was a tie. Yeah. And if you put a gun to my head and said you can't have a tie, you have to pick one, I would have picked Jesus slightly. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Tony was good. I mean, he's very good. I mean, you know who was helping him. You know, yeah, people who probably work on the burn and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A serious cast of talent. I saw a video online of Pete C uh, said the Tiana. That was a good one. Said my teeth are so fucked. He said, "Yeah, my teeth are uh, fucked up and horrible. They're so bad. I'm surprised you're not on their writing staff." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love that joke. PC is great. Yeah, he's he's a really good writer. He writes you a know, lot. I think there are people that he haven't writes really so much that like he's gonna have so many good. The things cool thing about too. the roast battle is, I think there are some people that haven't quite found their voice as comics yet. You but think they're finding? They it? go on the roast battle and they f- they are really good at just writing roast jokes, which is not really my forte. I'm I can only do I'm I'm a nice guy. I can only really do roast jokes. In other character, as other characters, yeah, and I've I'm seen, good at it that way. But yeah. like as myself, totally. I don't want to. I don't want to like make fun of people to their faces. Yeah, I get that. Um, well, I think that's I Jesus' know. problem. He's just yeah. too fucking. How nice. was Benji and Yasser? I that was good, that. very good. I, mean, I bet too, that one was amazing. Very. Ass- what this is just like the year in review for Carlos since he hasn't been at the comedy yeah. store. I just want to know. I wish I was at the Benji and Yasser one. To be honest with you. That was a yeah, great I didn't one. See that one I mean, it, probably the last two months have been great. Uh, Virginia Collins and uh, Candace, Thompson. Candace Thompson was killer. Uh, that was a good one because I thought they were friends, so I thought they would uh, kind of go easy on each other. But apparently, they're just acquaintances. Right yeah. now, there's a shtick where Don keeps trying to challenge Brody to it. Oh, to really? A, to a battle, and Brody and Brody's won't like, do it. "I'll do a warm up off." <laughs> I mean, that could be That's a good funny. one if they both write for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's no joke up there. You know, you have to write. And well, write. Don has to get up before 10 o'clock at night. Oh, to, Don's To write great, his jokes. Dude. I mean. And Brody would just like get distracted, I feel. But it's not It's not like a stand-up show. It's yeah, like, I know. It's You have to like have jokes, four jokes in the first round. and, and Four in the first round. And you have to have rebuttals ready. I just don't know if, if you know, their style of... Uh, battling each other works is gruber gonna do one he'd be good Gruber would be great any gruber would be great um you know i don't think i would do it but you know you gotta do it Uh, it would depend i could you should do it as the house racist yeah well yeah but then i mean i'd like to uh you know i don't really i'd have to dislike the person somewhat and then i'd go all in. yeah same same that's the thing there's yeah. no one that I truly dislike so much that I would want to. There's some but that's, people but that's, you might. But that's the thing about the roast bell is that it's people that are being friendly, but they're just flexing their muscle of writing mean jokes. Mm. And that's why it wouldn't work for me. Oh, uh, so no one that battles each other hates each other? There have been some ones that, that have gotten Who hates each heated other? at the end. Oh, really? Marino and Jerron Horton. Jerron was... Didn't want you have to hug at the end. Jerron was not into that. But I mean, really, that's so lame. Jerron was beating. Like, you're him. a comedian, you loser. <laughs> yeah, but Marino like you're not was a, a world star athlete. <laughs> like, but right. Marino was egging him on, oh, basically really? saying this is the best thing that's ever happened to you. Marino's a, like a rough guy, but but ooh, I mean, Jerron was whatever. beating him, and oh, beating okay. him pretty handily, and it's like you know, Marino got too fucked up. Yeah, he was on the you know, I think the. Uh, I think Marino was possibly, you know, I don't want, I don't know what he was on, but I think it was snowing on stage. And, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I think he was just drunk. And uh, my girlfriend's at a bachelorette party in Austin, and she had to spend the entire day at the airport yesterday, and then her flight flight got canceled. So I had to drive her to the airport and pick her up in the same day, and then she went today, and now she's sending me pictures of strippers. I got your blowing coke rails out of 
her friend's asshole. Whoa, really? Let me see that closer. Yeah. Sounds like a party I uh, was at back in 89 at my, my friend phone's broken. It won't JW's. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm looking at a picture of a black guy in a towel with a backwards white hat on. He's ripped. He looks like a former you know, linebacker. Is that for Lexington Steel? Castro. <laughs> <laughs> Vince Voyeur He's snorting cocaine off of Sal uh, off of Sandy's uh girlfriend's uh friends. Not Sally's they're Sandy's no, girlfriend. Sally. Mr. Marcus. She has big tits, this girl. Yeah. She, Jesus. That's bosh, bosh. that just makes me hate my you life. You wanna see? No, nah, no, nah, man. I'm I'm out of that game. I'm I'm out of the nether world of parties and Never. Now I'm into the. I retweeted it. you, Earl. Oh, thanks, man. Just you know, inappropriate Earl. SoundCloud and iTunes. You know, help a brother out. I need to get some. My sp- triceps look good in this pic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You're a real Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Palmer Woodrow. I sent out that tweet saying, talking about I saw my script Palm City Ten, <laughs> Battle of the Palmers, and people are like congratulating me. <laughs> people are so stupid in this town. Yeah, I've. I tweeted something like, uh, I'm, I'm doing my first stand-up appearance on uh, the, the Ed Sullivan show. Oh, yeah, I And people that. were like, thought that I was being serious, and they were congratulating me. I was like, I, I, you fucking retarded? I like that line you had the other day. Uh, Control alt delia No. Uh, <laughs> the best line of 2011. On TV. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. What was the line? Comedy Central resents Sandy Danto. Hello! It's a, that's a classic Sandy line. I'll be on HBO. Uh, in, uh, HBO no. HBO a week. In a week. Uh, <laughs> I'll be on the HBO's phone system trying to get service. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait. Um, I just when's the mystery you. guest coming? She's, you know, she's on her way en route. I mean, it builds intrigue for the episode. Yeah, it really does, actually. I've never heard a podcast where there's a guest on the way. And I don't think you've ever met her. Well, I'm trying to make this podcast different. So, uh, you know, just trying to... What, by deleting half of them? Oh, man, it was a bummer, man. (laughs) You know... Well, you kept bumping us for, what, the guy from Scream? I had to bump you for David Arquette. I had to bump you for Tawny Katane. I I need numbers, baby. I mean, your ratings are so low. (laughs) People are going to confuse you with George Bush. (laughs) Bush. (laughs) Bush's baked beans. Beans. It reminds me of my favorite Three Stooges episode when Mo's like to Curly, he's giving them beans. He's like, beans, beans, beans. I'm sick of beans. So what are you going to do about it? Have some beans. The one with, <laughs> the one with Will Sasso? No. That ain't the Three Stooges, man. It's like saying kiss is the kiss now with my two buddies. Are you going to go to those football games? The LA Kiss. Uh uh, they're just like the band. The first two plays are great, and then the rest suck. That's hilarious. Hello. Let's talk about the good times. Good times. Great show with John Amos, <laughs> es- Esther Roll, Jimmy. Yeah, G. what are the good times, Sandy? The times when uh, we'd hang out at the comedy store until like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. I remember having laughs, and then we'd go get food somewhere dangerous, and then be out until like the Those sun came up. Those were the good times. I remember one night. Escorts were in play. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy. There were a lot of live ones. If this I, guy, I, I, I if remember, Carlos <laughs> was on that Malaysian airplane, they could have tracked his cell phone signal while he was trying to get back page in Taiwan. <laughs> By the way, if there was a uh, if there was a shitty comedy show on that plane, I'd find it in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I remember one night where I'm just like. Wh- we're outside in the parking lot. Or I'm outside in the parking lot with a girl. We were both. We were each with a girl. Okay. And Earl's just standing there. <laughs> He's just... I mean, literally, it's me, Sandy, and the two girls. And Earl's just standing there like a statue. Just being like, so where are we going next, guys? One of the W? The standard? Where are we going? <laughs> and finally, Earl leaves. And we're on our way to the place. And Earl's blowing up my phone, and I stop at 7-Eleven, so I'm on the motorcycle at this point, and I, I go get a five-hour energy. <laughs> yeah, most people take a five-hour energy at four in the morning <laughs> so they can last with the hooker they're about to pay for. <laughs> she wasn't a hooker, Earl. Yeah, oh, escort and body It wasn't rubs. an escort. It was a girl I met on Names Night. So Names Night is when all the comics who get past at the store get their names on the wall. And, uh, yeah, I remember you left a message saying... Uh, 
Dude, where are you going? You left Big Daddy in the dust. Dude, Dude you know, you straight doing? to voicemail. I know. What yeah, time straight it to is. voicemail. <laughs> you got a couple live ones on the hook. You don't want Big Daddy with his marlin coming into the bay. <laughs> bay of pigs. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> He's got are the a nice inappropriate Ferrari. Earl listeners? Uh, do you, Do you think they have posters of your headshot? I mean, I, up on their wall. They're actually pretty good fans, dude. Don't spill chocolate on that fucking carpet, dude. <laughs> Jesus, chocolate Fridays. Dude. Look like the tip of your dick after anal that donut. <laughs> <laughs> Have the chocolate arugula. <laughs> <laughs> I made my return last night to Canner's Deli. Uh, oh after- really? After you had the. Oh tur- yeah, there was one time late at night that we went to Canner's twice. And twice that Earl was like, "Dude, I don't want to go here." Every time I come, there's a there's a pubic hair on my turkey burger. My Dude, omelet. wasn't there? <laughs> yeah. The, when I was with you We guys? went there and... I cleaned up the chocolate. Earl ordered an omelet and there was a fucking pube in it. <laughs> I got, it was right there and I swiped it. Dude, well, no, about... <laughs> Dude, these floors are a million dollars. About two years <laughs> before I got the omelet with you guys, I had a turkey... Bur- no, I, I got an omelet two years before that turkey burger... And there was pubic hair in it. And it wasn't some guy's hair. It was pubic hair. It was short. And there's no brothers in the back. So <laughs> it's all beans and, 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 and low-class whites. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember going with you. And I said, well, fuck it. I'll give him a second chance. And I order a turkey burger dry with lettuce. I open up the bun. And there's pubic hair in my fucking turkey burger. They just hate you there. And then, you know, Jeff Ross wanted to have a powwow. At, you know, almost a party. uh we wanted to go to the Rainbow. Uh, that was closed. So, oh, that sucks. Uh, they have good camp. pizza. We, ha- we had pizza a week ago with a tell, Ross. At the Rainbow? Fahim. It's the best place. Yeah, it was great, but they were like kicking us out. So oh. I don't think Jeff, I don't think, you know, everyone, it's like we're just about to spend hundreds of dollars in food yep. here. Uh, and Virginia, you know, was there. And, and so Cantor's, I made my return to Cantor's. Yeah. Which is where Guns N' Roses used to eat for free when they were They broke. for free. <laughs> oh, wait. Do we have a guest? Oh, no. I, I, oh, I thought Dean Del Rey had popped in. Did somebody mention Guns N' Roses? How many roses? And Dean showed me the podcasting ropes, man. You know, the guy's a fucking... Ropes. Animal on the uh, <laughs> ropes. I showed you the stand up ropes, ropes, ropes. That's discover- Jeff Richards. I discovered you. He did. Jeff Where Richards. can I find a female bodybuilder? What's your address? 85. 85- oh, no, I can't give out my <laughs> real address. So, I mean, you know, we got some weird fans here, but, you know, we'll take them one fan at a time, one day at a time. So, what happened at Canada? <laughs> the log this time? cabin. Uh, so nothing. I got, got the uh, d- a dry egg white omelet with uh, potatoes. And uh, did you tell the waitress to tell the cook to go easy on the grease? I said no oil. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll make it worth your while. And, uh, Do you? What's your tip? On, well, when actually, they, uh, you know, someone else picked up the tab. He and, just leaves his headshot <laughs> and uh, a digital headshot. <laughs> um, so uh, liquid headshot. Yeah. Liquid zoo. Uh, liquid paper. Um, so can I? Can we talk about this? When's Carlos going to make his eventual return to the comedy? I store? mean, you know, he has to break bread with someone and uh, Adam. He, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, hopefully. I don't want to go back, honestly. Yeah, but you do. I, I mean, like, I don't have anything against it. I just don't want to go back. I like. Yeah, but some. I like some days you out. say that, and some days you're like, "Fuck that place, fuck this, fuck that," and then the next day you'll be like, "Well, it's because I want to have laughs with back. you and Earl." That's literally why. I want to go hang with you, Earl, Brody. Yeah, but those laughs come from, like, the ridiculous people that are there. That Yeah, there are plenty of people at the comedy store that I don't want to have to, like, get stuck in a conversation with. Or, Earl, what do you think? Because... I mean, it's the best place in town. I mean, the improv's really fun, but, you know, just nothing beats the store late it's night. Ju- there's no place on earth like it. And it stays open later than any other place in L.A. That's it on the strip. Dude, what's L.A.? <laughs> I'm from West Hollywood. L.A. Hardy, very funny black comic. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Dude, I've never even been to L.A. <laughs> I just think maybe we need to make like a, like a plan to get Carlos to come back. 12-step plan. Well, you know. <laughs> you should, okay, you know what? I'll go to the comedy store if you make a 12-step plan. <laughs> and the 12th step is me going to the store after 1 a.m. What are the first 11 uh, you steps? You and Earl have to do it. But uh-huh. here, here are my rules. I don't want to do I 
I'm still mad at Don. Why are you mad at Don? I'll tell you after. Okay. Well, Don's a good guy. Don, but Don. But he's is, not a good guy to me. Well, but I mean, I don't know. Well, you know, I, of course, he's a good guy to you. I, I know that. Or at least I, you know, he's giving me my only stage time up there. But you know, you know, let's keep the mood light. You know. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what are your other stipulations? Yeah, that's about it. I'm just mad at Don. I don't want to deal with Don. What about um, A E? I'll deal with Adam. A and E. <laughs> good network. Adam and E get. <laughs> Well, you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, you know. Uh, Do you want ratings or what? I mean, you know, that'd be a good roast battle. Adam versus Adam? Carlos. I think we'd see a live death on the stage. I would I would do a roast battle with Don. <laughs> I would do one with Don. And I would bring all the money in my bank account. But they're going to have to start, uh, you know, they're going <laughs> to. You got to ensure the quality of these roasts. So you're going to have to start thinking creatively. Honestly, dude. I know, I know you have your your. Yeah, but why am I not allowed to? Store, why am I? But, but if you came and saw a roast battle, you would be so about it. It's yeah, so I'm cool. sure I would like it. You it's know, Rel's beats. okay, whatever. But I like Moses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <Where's> Rel? <laughs> so I mean, you know, my, maybe uh, you know, how about if I roast? Would that get you back? It, uh, Why don't you come to my roast in disguise? I'll start handpicking opponents. You could be the house racist. And I'm going to come out. What if I just say nigger the whole time? <laughs> dude, you Jesus, can't. Jesus, dude. <laughs> he's not going to edit this. You can't just say come on, that. Dude, you can't say that. <laughs> what, who, dude, I'm gonna, he's not I'm Beast I'm going to I'm I'm test her editing skills. <laughs> <laughs> That's Carlos Rera. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even my name. <laughs> Find him on Twitter. At CJ Herrera. Uh, listen, right now it is... Um, 850 uh may uh what's Ninth. the date may 9th i did not consent and do not condone any foul language that's used on this podcast um, you know. v stiviano is the audio engineer for this <laughs> so i mean as tony hinchcliffe told me earl there's one race the boston marathon hey <laughs> so well maybe i'll that'll get me to do the roast if that gets you back at the comedy store you know we'll uh I'll, I'll try and get a hand-picked opponent. Maybe I'll roast Meyerwitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> yeah, a retarded person versus or you. Maybe, <laughs> how about this? <laughs> how about this? Why don't I get Gail and we'll just Gail. roast? Gail! That would be a great roast. You versus Gail? You'd well, have to really go after her, though. She'd I'll... go after me. Well, your dick is small. Well, yeah. Well, your pussy smell. Okay. <laughs> Who won that round? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah. I think well, well, it's possible. the queen won that round. I'm trying to think who you would be a good, good to go up against. Honestly, you versus Tommy would be the best. Yeah, it would be ever. the best roast. Yeah, but he's probably not. I mean, he, would, he probably doesn't have material. Yeah, but it, maybe <laughs> there'd be a comic that could like dress up as him and do him. That would be pretty funny, you know. Maybe, uh, but I wouldn't want an undercard. I want the big daddy. Yeah, know? yeah, of course. I mean, I, I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, I would have done Tony. I, I would have gone up, you know. But, yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Jill Tony. Nope. Fuck you, Tony. You did some good pussy juice on your dick. <laughs> You're a fucking bitch. You're a slut. That's Jeff Richards. That's my impression of Jeff Richards doing Tony and Jill. <laughs> Jill. That's pretty good. Me and Sandy ate with Jeff Richards last week. Oh, Jeff's a good dude. Good you know. Jeff's the best. He's so funny. And you just root for him, but you know, it's, it's you know, <laughs> it you just do shows man. you how unfair Hollywood is. Oh yeah, when you see certain people with you know major heat and you know they blow yeah. balls on stage, and it's like, <clears throat> what are you gonna do? That's the most disheartening. That happened the other night. There was some guy doesn't even live out here. He's in town for Detroit. Bumped everybody on potluck because there was somebody from Montreal there to see him, and he was just. Very, very. I mean, you could tell he hasn't been doing it very long, but they just they love that shit. He looked young and cute, and it's like, what are you? That's they don't care about content. They care about looks. Oh, I didn't even bother auditioning this year. I didn't either. What's the point? You it's, know, it's dumb. I mean, I'd still like to do it, but it's rigged, is what it is. Well, I think at 45, I'm probably a little late in the game for new faces. <laughs> oh, speak for yourself. Well, it's possible. I mean, I'd like to get on the old prunes or <laughs> prunies. Prunies.
Screamies. <laughs> so, you know, you guys got any shows coming up? Um, I'm at the Improv on Hollywood. Or I'm at the Hollywood Improv this Sunday, you, May 11th. It? Okay, I'll put that. I'll put this out. Uh, you know, people, if they, if you're in LA, could, you sold out what? the Improv the last time. Yeah, April that was 4th, a great I show. Sold it out. Wait, are we done? No, I'm just. You know, there's no format to this. I'm just like, you know, why not ask? Uh, you know, it's like when Kiss plays rock and roll all night <laughs> in the middle of the show. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a storyteller show at Westside Comedy Theater on May 15th. You should tell Earl's gangbang stories. <laughs> ask Earl. <laughs> you. Sh- so I left my car out there, and uh, still lights on, car running, real just go out there. It looks like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> you should seriously do that. Bodies everywhere. I mean, real freaks. You at a storytelling show would be the greatest thing of yeah. all time. Well, how did I get? How did you not you? get on Ari's? Well, I could, I could get you booked on on storytelling. Shows. I don't think I'm famous enough for Ari's. No, Ari's you, very nice to me though. He, yeah, he, you know. He Ari, actually Ari would put you on his, I think. He paid me. It's going to be a TV show now. I it know. It was a web show for a while. He paid me uh, very well to uh, be in his uh, Comedy Store 420 show. Oh, yeah? Uh, April 20. Uh, yeah, I guess a couple weeks ago at the store Sunday. Uh, me and uh, Whitney and Tebow did a, a sketch. It was pretty funny. So. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. I, Tebow dipped his balls in our food and we had to eat it. You ate it? <laughs> yeah, it's gross, but it was a good sandwich from Pink Dots. So. It's like going to Canners. Yeah, oh, dude, but this time it's for real, because I know where that dick has been. <laughs> I'll take the TV on rye. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. The skakel on rye. You know, if anyone's out there who wants uh, a, sto- a good storyteller, mine are real, man. I ain't no fucking ham and egger. No embellishments. Yeah, they're amazing stories. Yeah. Well, I've lived a wacky life. I mean, <laughs> dude, I lived on the strip for all my life. So, yeah, oh, I'm trying to think because last time you said that your mom bought you said if you never do drugs or drink until you're 18, I'll buy you any car you want. Well, within reason. I mean, yeah. So you didn't get a Ferrari. I uh, know. Uh, I asked my dad uh, or my mom first for a uh, Maserati, uh, and you know. That wasn't in the card. So I got a bright red BMW, 318i, all the fixings. And uh, I was so excited to get the car that I drove home from uh, Ocean Motors uh, BMW on the 20th in Santa Monica to my uh, parents' house in Bel Air. And as I make the left off of Sunset right past Marymount High School, which had a lot of hot gash there. What was the left? Copa de Oro, dude. And uh, Copa de Oro. The whole car is smoking like mad. So I'm like, what's going on here? So I get up to the, my parents' house, and I realized I'd been driving with the emergency brake on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what so, year was this? Uh, this is 86. And, uh, and then Marymount was right next to Bel Air Country Club. So I had a scam where the second tee, if you shanked your shot to the right uh, your balls would go into the Marymount parking lot so I would like unload like three or four balls into the lot and go hey girls have you seen my balls <laughs> <laughs> do you golf often I uh, someone saw my clubs so you know I mean but the golf the country club world is very racist I mean it's like the super la- racist yeah, yeah it's like the literally the last bastion of uh, racism and that's almost accepted in this yeah. society um and so, so we you know where on. else is border patrol and the comedy store. i was listening to <laughs> yeah in the comedy store i was listening to a news piece about border patrol those it's guys crazy. can do whatever they want there were there were like over 900 complaints filed about border patrol officers and 13 of them got disciplined and six of those disciplinary actions were uh talking to's yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, what do you do? It's uh, they got they can do whatever they want. It's a lot of bad people out, out here in this world, racist people, and like, you know, that's really what brought the the house racist sketch on roast battle to, to come to be was just I want to make fun of these. Idiots. I don't think it's yeah. people that are sensitive over racism. I think it's people that that whenever there's an outcry in public over some joke people made those people are racist and they don't get it 
and they're just being sensitive or they're trying to cover up for you know the way they really feel well like leslie jones on saturday night live right that was a great fucking sketch or segment and you know she's getting people saying we're gonna kill you and like you know it's just like you know god knows if this thing ever got to tv and the roast or the house racist character got on the tube. I, I can't imagine the death threats I would get. They'd be so funny though. You know, I'm yeah. t- I said one joke about Patrick Ewing just finished climbing the Empire State Building. <laughs> and I, I said it. I said 9/11 would have never have been successful if uh, Rick Mahorn was on Tower Two. <laughs> I mean, really funny jokes, <laughs> but can you imagine the hate mail I'd, I'd be getting if, if that was like a, a weekly character or like Comedy Central? On coming? television, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, it'd be insane. I have to conceal Yeah, but my at the idea. same time, it's like to conceal your identity. Comedy Central has a hard time getting any of their shows to be popular. It would... Because they're all death, bad. It would be... No, they're not. I mean, they have some good shows, but... That would definitely They're not, make the show go viral if there was some kind of outcry over it. I don't it. like Comedy Central's non-scripted shows. What non-scripted shows do they even have? The Burn. What's the other one? They scripted. No, I mean like like the ones that aren't like t- like classic TV shows, okay. like Workaholics. Brody is show. No, I like Brody show. I'm wrong. I like The Burn. I didn't like it. I think you meant Jezelnay, probably. I, I like Jess. I didn't like, like that one either. I remember starting with him. Really? All these people I started with, they're all famous. Same here. I mean, Gerard. I mean, I didn't start with him, but you know. yeah. But he's a good dude, so. I mean. He's the only person. He shot his HBO special at the store the other night. That's crazy. And he's the only person, I think, that could pull that off. Of, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's great. And he's a nice guy, too. Yeah, which is really nice. So I just want. I'm still and super fu- undeniably funny. Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to uh, hear back from Kilborn. I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> I had a three minute. Uh, I sent him a three minute demo reel to a uh, Bart. I'm Cole. still waiting to hear back from Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm uh, waiting to hear about the uh, cold open at the Last Supper. Hello, <laughs> twelve Jews around the table. What that waiter get tipped? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, yeah, it's, it's comedy. It's a crazy business, man. You know, a lot of laughs. and uh, But, you know, it was fun to do the roast battle last night in front of Sarah Silverman. She, she got had, the racist character pretty She easily. liked you guys. And Steve Byrne yeah. was cool. And, you know, uh, Bill Burr a couple of weeks ago was cool. Attell was great. Attell was a, a judge? Yeah, Ross gets, you know, his friends. Yeah, of course. It's pretty neat to, uh, you know see these people like get to perform in front of them so you know go check out the roast it's really battle. cool they do get comedy they, they a-list people. judges yeah i mean delia and, was judge and he was cool he he liked it and, yeah <clears throat> that's cool you know and hannibal burris is super funny he he's uh sorry ron funches was a host or a yeah he judge. was uh you know not too many people don't get the idea so and the cool thing about it is the people roasting each other aren't necessarily big comics but they do a really good job yeah well i think after the matt taylor satara one it's like okay we have to have good comics good matchups and then otherwise you know i mean jeff ross donates a lot of time to the show and he comes every week gets his friends to you know come judge so he's not doing this just yeah of course you know he's doing it because he sees something in it and there is i could see this on the air i can too they'd have to a producer would come in and probably ruin it and take away all the stuff that makes it you know the it's not just about the roasting back and forth it's like all the stuff going on in the room that's yeah. really funny you've got the all negro wave with jamar <laughs> neighbor no that's what it's called yeah jamar neighbors and they Keith. do the wave after really funny jokes that's amazing. and they like if if it's it's if it's especially effective and mean they'll like come up on stage and dance and stuff <laughs> like uh like jamar neighbors do. uh made out with Becky Robinson and then me and Whitney tried to make out in front of them to just, you know, cancel it out. Did you make out with her? Uh, no, we, I couldn't get around uh, to Hinchcliffe. It was just too many moving parts, but it's really, I mean, Jamar Neighbors is a great dude. and So funny. And a lot of those people in the Negro wave are like the next wave of, of like 
talented black comics like Jack. Uh, I don't know his last Jack name. Jack Knight. Yeah, Jack Knight's a super Jamar. funny dude. Jamar yeah. Keith Soul, he's super funny, and uh, J- Jeremiah Watkins is like the honorary white guy, and uh, yeah, and uh, you know Nate Hurd. You know, it's just mm-hmm. such a great uh, collection of young and older talent. Yeah, you know, you know, so you know, it's just cool. It's basically like our old midnight show. Wednesday midnight show. You guys don't do that paved anymore. The way. No, we brought it back for a little bit, but it was too. Oh yeah, it's I too cr- it's too underground. But this it kind of like paved the way for this to be. Yeah, because I remember thing. Moses had the Tuesday mic. Yeah, and then it just turned into that. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our mystery guest is here. Oh nice! <laughs> if you're if you're I met hu- Whitney at the Improv. If you're hungry, let's get some rice and beans. Whitney, say hello. Hey there, guys. What have we been talking about? Oh, we're not we- fucking. <laughs> Really? That's well, what you've been it's talking like about? for about thirty seconds. For like thirty seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we didn't make it a whole thing. So why don't you sit next to Sandy or in between those guys? We'll you know wrap up in a few minutes. Wrap you want up. one tenth of a donut? <laughs> I would have got you a donut. I would have got you a donut. Yeah, I it's bet. a high end donut. So we got to yeah, sit in between them or whatever. Why don't uh, why don't you guys want to share a mic and want, or whatever? whatever. Oh, yeah, that's I perfect. I don't want to take anybody's thunder. I don't want to take anyone's thunder. Are you guys going thunder to the house pa- together? Thunder in yeah. Paradise cool. with Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Blue Thunder with Roy Schneider? Wendy, can I tell you something? Yeah, let's go. I just want to tell you Great that song by the Cars, Let's Go. <laughs> I feel like you've lighted like this amazing thing in Earl. And I just feel really? like he's a new man ever since he's met you. Do I really, I actually do. Th- I actually do think that. I think Earl has been going through whatever for the, ever since I've known him, like you mm-hmm. know, ups and downs, like everyone else. Uh-huh. And I think ever since he's met you, everything has been a little bit better. I really do believe that. that. Sandy, do you feel that way? Yeah, I think the. I, See, think I mean, the the collaboration <laughs> of the of the house races is is taking yeah. things up another level for sure. Yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's cool. Life. I well, think. I needed her because I was running out of racist things to say without actually. I know. To I'm be trying racist. to give you guys a compliment. <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys a compliment. I think it's cool. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, Whitney's. And all her lines, like I just said previously, are, are her lines. We don't. We help each other write, but we don't give each other jokes. We just, you know, maybe subjects and, and whatnot. I mean, I told them about your Jane Goodall joke, oh, which thanks. is maybe. Yeah. Uh, and pussy doesn't hurt either. <laughs> making things better. Yeah, I mean, you know, hot girl. I mean, this. Uh, if this show gets on the air, you were saying uh, you're going to need a girl to break up the testosterone and, and you know, this animal. What about Bernard from Z Pizza? Uh, Bernard from Z Pizza is uh, <laughs> he's a gay gentleman who uh, always gives me an extra slice because he wants a slice. But uh, <laughs> my bakery's closed. Doesn't he text you still? He texts me. I get. I don't know why I gave him my number once. <laughs> Well, yeah, what was you're like a you're like a cock tease to gay guys. Yeah. Well, I just I, I'm like the Taj so Mahal. Oh. I'm the Taj Mahal of these guys. They know they can't enter, so you know <laughs> that means you know they want it. Uh, you know, you want what you don't have. You know, if you're you have a Ferrari, you want a Lamborghini. If you've got a Lamborghini, you want a Prius uh, or one of those uh, private planes. What are those uh, G four ca- high end cars? Uh, Teslas. Oh yeah, Teslas. So you know, if you got a movie deal, you want a production deal. You yeah. Know? So you know, if you're an open micer, you want my career. <laughs> So, uh, you know, <laughs> we're all just out there. We're just little birds flying in the zoo of comedy. Liquid Zoo on Van Nuys and uh, <laughs> Sherman you, Lane. You got a gangbang, you want an orgy. You, <laughs> well, you I got, mean, Whitney's... Uh, you got a bathtub with high-end lights. You want a hot tub. A hot, hot tub <laughs> time machine. Hot tub Johnny. You want um, an infinity You got a friend tub. named Miami Eric. You want a friend named Monte Carlo Carlos. <laughs> Monty the Jew. <laughs> I mean, you know... I'm just changing my friend's names to protect the innocent. Not for the innocent. Good kiss song off of Lick It Up. <laughs> Written uh, by Vinnie Vincent, of course. You're like the rich Brody. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not rich. I just, you know, I don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from. But, Forever. I mean, no, I mean, you know, I'm on the payroll. The stock market took a dip. I mean, you know. Are you going to get Bitcoins? Oh, sorry. What are you, one of the Winklevoss twins? Yeah, they have eleven million dollars in them. I was wondering if you were going to get it. No, I'm. Uh, my money's invested in uh, real estate, oil, uh, 
couple uh, slush funds and uh, one offshore betting book in the Caymans. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, I, I, I invest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you and some turkey pro- burgers. <laughs> so you couldn't go half these. <laughs> well, I mean, Whitney uh, and I uh, went to Burger Lounge once. It cost me about $38. <laughs> How many cents? <laughs> uh, uh, Twenty-five. I mean, I, I tipped her ten. Ten bones. Oh, that's nice. I went to I went there with Esther once, and she got recognized. And well, I had to take the picture of Esther and some lawyer. Well, now your career is really now your Esther's personal paparazzi, personal pizza, Little Caesars, hot and ready. So Whitney, how was your What's show? Wrong, you Whitney? just did. Um, it was it was there was one person in the room. It wasn't a show. I was just trying out some things. Okay. Well, I mean, did it go well? Yeah, it went well. Just did some new stuff. Got it was it. great. Can't complain. And your uh, podcast, uh, have any, has anyone of your friends told you how good it was that, that we did? Uh, I've had a few people talk about it. I mean, your say, phone blows up. But most up. people just want to know. if I think if, only people are listening because, if well, at bonus. least to that episode, because to find out if we're having sex or not. But we, you know, and this is, the, we've gone over many reasons why we're not. I mean, you know, you tell I listened to that episode. But it's true, though. I'm too, uh, you tell me why you wouldn't sleep with me and be honest. I would sleep with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you Hey, know. team, I would sleep with you, too. Yeah, but Merv is sure a <laughs> guy. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think. But I have big tits. You do have big tits, Mervis, I'll tell you that. So, well, I mean, yeah, I think it would ruin our... Uh, body than Croydon. <laughs> I think it would ruin dude, our creative partnership. Cool. What are you doing, dude, bringing her up? Yeah, the sex, sex ruins uh, the creativity and the productivity. It does? Yeah, I mean, look at Tony and Jill, I mean... <laughs> yeah, they were writing They partners. were a real team. Tag team. She told them to jump off a hench cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Whitney are on our way to the ice house right now. Red bands, a death squad, uh, you know, yeah, all that good stuff. So uh, it's nine eleven. Nine, good time to end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end the podcast at nine eleven. Who's driving to the ice house? Uh, I'll dude, drive. I'll you know, take it's a the far- Magnum, probably, dude. Uh, my car is named after a black guy's rubber. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, once I was at Rite Aid and this huge black guy was buying condoms in front of me and he, he said to the transvestite Reese, he's my friend, <laughs> Reese loved me, always was trying to get me to go in the bathroom with him. And uh, the black guy... You really are a cock to use to all these... Dude, I just, it's a vibe. <laughs> so the Wait, black guy calling- says... <laughs> The black guy Women says to Reese, "Men want to be with me, <laughs> and me. Exit only back there. No chili dogs for Mister Stakel. <laughs> All right, just finish the story, dude. Well, stop interrupting me with your shtick. <laughs> what shtick? This is me. I know, <laughs> dude. Stop trying to put your shtick in my butt. What are you? Uh, this is from the. Uh, is this, I'll give you an '80s reference. <laughs> Eric Roberts and Star 80. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Macho Man that goes to this uh, episode. Oh, yeah. 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 Dig it. I can do a mean Scott Hall impression, but I'll do that in another podcast. It's Carlos stretching like he probably did Feels for his good. boss at William Morris. <laughs> Feels good. Jeff Berg. <laughs> Peter Berg. So, uh, Michael Ovitz. Mike Ovitz Michael. So, uh, you know, this has been another inappropriate Earl. Uh, you got anything you want to plug? No. Uh, just his hair. Yeah, maybe just my hair. Brian Drolet from The Hills. Why do you think I, lo- I have... you're obsessed with him. <laughs> you know, every fucking IMDb That's credit. not true, though. We went to Mel's like three years ago or something. During the good times. And he sat next to Mel's. And he sat next to us. And you looked at me, and I was like, oh, that's Brian Jolet from The Hills. And uh, literally for three years, you've been like, dude, you're obsessed with him. <laughs> Just right. nonstop. All right. Thanks for contributing to that story. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Did his episode get deleted? Well, or kind deleted. of. It, we, I didn't have a cable connected, so the whole podcast, and it was a really good podcast because he did that movie, uh, Dumbbells. Oh, yeah. With the sand, yeah. Which was in theaters. 
So that's Wait, pretty what's impressive. Wrong, what's wrong, Whitney? That one got deleted. You you deleted that the dumbbell one. Um, no, it just I didn't have a cable plugged in, so the whole sound there's just constant. So it's buzz. just a conversation we had. Oh. It's a great podcast too, man. I mean, he talked about what it takes to get a movie made and, and the, the steps, and you know we were in the pilot. Twelve steps. Oh. We were in the pilot <laughs> damaged goods. That, I remember uh, that pilot. What happened to it? You know, I think the pilots on nine eleven had a better day. Uh, just. <laughs> Didn't happen, but we're still we're still working it. We're helping that 3D scene with the crane works out. <laughs> at Santa Clarita Studios up in. Uh, I right remember when you were there. You called me multiple yeah. times. I remember I whatever. I was checking in via Facebook so people could see I was at a major studio on the uh, Tango and Cash. No, I'm sorry, that's my favorite Stallone movie. Uh, Tango and uh, Bash. Franklin and Bash. Franklin and Bash. Uh, set you know, Franklin couple, and Gash. Uh, Franklin and Gash. He was the on the good intersection. Of it. The Bone Zone. The Gash Station. The Come. Bone Zone. That's our strip club we wanted to open two years ago. Yeah, me, Gruber, and Carlos <laughs> wanted to know, open up the Bone Zone and then have a sushi restaurant in <laughs> called um, the, the Gash Station. <laughs> <laughs> Try the fried rice. Whitney rice. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Whitney, Whitney Remember, Cummins, Paul Cummins. The good old days. Good old Blender. days. Dude, Eric just Robert. get on there. There's what? gotta be a live one with big tits. When I would get on Blender before there was Tinder. On, I used to go on Tinder until it fucking chewed up my data one month and I did <laughs> I did but buy like a three hundred dollar fucking credit. I had to lie and say uh, someone stole my phone because <laughs> I, you know, Tender is a data usage service, so if you never turn it off, it just keeps... Yeah, that's so, so was, funny. Because yeah. I'd be on the gym for like two hours on the treadmill, just clicking right, just <laughs> trying to get some action, you know. <laughs> Whitney looks so horrified. Well, listen, if if I told stories about Whitney and, and who blows up her phone, known and unknown, I mean, that's another podcast. Let's just say if your roses are ever in bloom... You might have a good day. <laughs> there's gold in them there hills. So, uh, you know, I hope there's law and order tonight. Um, <laughs> dude, dude you what, what is she friends game? with Mike Young? <laughs> Young Mike. Uh, I, listen, I'm I not love gonna, Mike Young. I'm not going to rat on who blows up Whitney's phone, but, you know. But I am going to listen to rat. Let's, <laughs> let's just say uh, my favorite drummer in Kiss was Eric Carr, the Fox. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two can play that game, Holmes. You play with fire, you'll get burned. Is that name Lachlan? Oh, uh, yeah. Name Lachlan? He's very good looking. Lachlan Patterson got, uh, he's on Last Comic Standing. He's a check for him. Very good looking guy. I think Whitney was quite enamored with him. Totally left a conversation she was having with me to talk to Lachlan. So, <laughs> birds of a feather fuck together. <laughs> so, Carlos Herrera, where can people find you on Twitter? At CJ Herrera. How, how, why don't you spell it? C J H E R R E R. Yeah, his listeners don't speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah what do you think this is? Telemundo? <laughs> this is radio, not TV. That's a callback from the Die Hard line. And earlier. <laughs> and Sandy, where you'll be at the improv this Sunday? Yeah, May 11th, 9 p.m. I'll be at the improv and Westside Comedy Theater, May 15th. And where can uh, people find you on Twitter? Uh, at Sandy Danto. And Whitney. Uh, uh, my Twitter is Whitney Lee Rice, and please check out my webcam modeling uh, videos as well as my website. Contribute. Donate. And uh, look up Whitney Lee Rice on YouTube. She's That's got, where they're at. She's actually got some really funny, a lot of funny, uh, over 100 YouTube videos. I've got six, and the, the, the newest one is like four years old. So she's working the system. We're on our way to the Ice House. This is Earl. You can find me on Twitter at... Uh, Jerry Sandusky and uh, Jerry Sandusky. They knew what was going on with that guy. Oh, I was a contributor to the Second Mile charity. Second Mile. Last Mile. Cinderella's hit song. Me and, me and Jerry Sandusky took a chubby boy in the shower. I we went husky to Sandusky. Sandusky. <laughs> I mean, they knew what that guy was up to. All the shower heads were at a foot and a half. Hey, <laughs> what goes into 13 twice? Jerry Sandusky. <laughs> Uh, that's an old Michael Jackson joke. So, uh, all right. I, you can find me on Twitter at Earl Skakel, E A R L S K A K E L. We are on uh, SoundCloud. And for you, Steve Jobs, Bone Smokers, we're also on iTunes. Don't look up Earl Skakel on iTunes. That gets you to my shitty comedy CD. 
uh, look up Inappropriate Earl. Uh, this episode will be released uh, in a few hours. I'd like to personally, in all seriousness, thank Sandy and Carlos for coming back. I know it was a pain in the ass. I'd like to thank Whitney for coming in uh, toward the tail end. Watch her episode number 20 with Whitney. Uh, or listen to it. It's really funny. And uh, Tony Katane episode's great. David Arquette. A lot of funny uh, people are coming to Don Fry, UFC legend. Uh, we got Fred Curry from Cinderella, the drummer from Cinderella, coming in in a few weeks. Stephen yeah, had the best quote ever in rock and roll history when they said, Fred, what are your career goals? He said, I just want to be good enough to play on the albums. What the fuck? So uh, I'll see you guys uh, on the Internet Superhighway. And as always, stay white. Doing. <laughs>